Now tuning in to Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Legally binding. <laughs> so I am now said that on the podcast, and it is now factual, and it can now be used in court. Yeah, on court, on yeah. the court, on the basketball court, on top of the court. Yeah, no. <laughs> in the court and on the court. Shaquille O'Neal will pass it to me on the court, and I will slam. And dunk that's it. how I beat Shaq. You know what I mean? So that's what that song is about. <laughs> oh, God, I think about that way more than I should be thinking about that you know yeah have i ever told you about my dream is to just unfollow everyone on social media except for Ooh, Shaq? you have not like i think about doing that weekly <laughs> like i like if i would not be surprised if one day i looked at your twitter account <laughs> and i was like yep today's the day cody went rogue <laughs> cody is not following <laughs> anybody <laughs> Except for Shaq. Like, I'm sorry to break all the mutuals. I'm sorry for all the, like, business connections on my social media platforms. I love all of you, but I just... I think my mental health would be better if the only thing I saw on my Twitter was Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> I, that, honestly, that would make me very happy. And yeah. I think that the world would be a better place if I saw more yeah. Shaq in my life. So, yeah. you're not wrong. What's he up to? I want to get updates from him. He's the only person I want updates from. <laughs> I don't care what anyone else is doing. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that'd be fine. We'll work. Yeah, it. we'll, we'll figure, figure out a way, out. you know? It's not the time yet, but <laughs> one day. <laughs> I, so, so my boyfriend is an enigma. Um, we, he jokes yep. constantly that he is becoming more and more like a, a cryptid every day. Um, not only because <laughs> of the way that I describe him on this podcast, but also because I also describe him very much like a cryptid in my classroom as well. He prides sure. himself on the fact that to middle schoolers, he sounds really cool, but to everybody else in real life, he's not that cool. <laughs> um you know what, though? That's kind of the coolest thing. Like, if you're cool to middle schoolers, like, that's, like, ungrounded territory. Like, I don't have to be cool to anyone. If I'm cool to, like, one middle schooler, that's, like, all the validation I need. It has now become my life to become cool to one of my middle schoolers. Yeah. So. I believe in you. Same. But, yeah. So, in that, my my boyfriend is a fan of Drop Mix. And so, one of the things that we spent last night doing is playing Drop Mix. You know, as you do to unwind after a long day. Yeah. And what I wish that Drop Mix had was some nuanced songs from our past. And you know what mm -hmm. I wish that that had is how I beat Shaq. Because yeah. that would really yeah. add some flavor. Oh, for sure. Just on top of all of the Carly Rae Yeah, which song would pair best with... <laughs> yes. Yep. I really want that. Because it's got... It's got some of the Panic at the Disco, be like, beeps and bops. You know, that's what they call the bops sure, nowadays, sure. the beeps and bops. It's got the Fall Out Boy, that, yeah. that We Night. It's got yeah. some of the, the Michael Jackson that we want, but does it have the Aaron Carter to satiate the needs that I have? Mm. That's what I, I yeah, really... Yeah, I feel, I find that those needs are not often met. <laughs> I, that's I'm what always I'm wanting more of the Carters. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Also, um, I do feel like I need to pass this along to you because Cody, my boyfriend recently described you as a, <laughs> when we were looking, oh no, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> when we were looking at your Twitter feed and recently saw that you posted a review of Nerve, uh -huh. um, and Chris saw that you posted Nerve as a three and a half stars, a movie that I have never seen, uh -huh. um, and my boyfriend recently described you and the enigma of all of these as the journalism that you post. He was like, he looked at me all of a sudden when we were having dinner. And I was like, yes. Like, he just suddenly looked at me and he was like, Cody, Cody is like a fart in the wind. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? 
And I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> so you're going to need to like expand on <laughs> everything that you just said. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? What does that mean? Cody, I wish that I could tell you <laughs> that that any other words came out of Chris's mouth. <laughs> but there there weren't any. He <laughs> just kind of dissolved into pixels after that. <laughs> I don't have a boyfriend anymore. He's just a computer. <laughs> he um he just kind of those were his last that was his last <laughs> prophecy, I think. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I have to avenge your boyfriend's death now. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I'm trying to even, like, contextualize some anything. <laughs> he said that you were an enigma, and, and that was literally the last words that were spoken before the ghost <laughs> in our apartment disappeared um, and took him. So, wow. um, I- <laughs> if anyone was interested in making new business cards... Apparently, you know, at Dyke Discourse, a fart in the wind. I, yeah, I guess. I, I, I guess my my one of I mean one of many questions I have, but the most pertinent <laughs> question at this moment <laughs> is the fact that what really set this off was my review of Nerve. Yeah. Was it because it was too high, too low? I don't. I'm not sure what the general consensus of the movie Nerve is, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean. I wish I had literally any answers for you, but he's in the Matrix, I'm pretty sure. And I think I have to do sure. some sort of ritual or like sure. summon. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who the I have ones to... and zeros. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I have to contact to like summon him back. I will say about the movie Nerf, it is the most buck one of the most buckwild movies in the world. <laughs> Because it is Emma Roberts and Dave Franco going on fun, technological, weird capitalism adventures together. It's very strange. Sure. And there is a moment in this film where Emma Roberts does rap along to Wu-Tang. Oh. So that's def- that is- that happens, which is the worst thing I've probably had to experience in a film as of late. Sure. But, like, other than that, a fun time. If you were interested in someone not rapping along to Wu Tang, hi, welcome to Into the Twilight. Yeah, well, beautiful segue. We're here. We're here. Um, we will ne- We promise you, we will never rap along to Wu Tang. <laughs> Under no circumstances will one of our bits ever relate to us rapping along to Wu Tang. No. We know our places. We know our lanes. <laughs> yeah. We know where those lanes are. I, w- I know my lanes, and my lanes don't swerve like that. No. Nope. Yep. Cody, how the fuck are you doing? I, y- now I'm feeling a, a complex wave. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of what you just bestowed upon me. Yeah, I feel like I, I did. I kind of said a lot of things on you. You really, like, dropped a bomb on me. Mm. Like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to, like, live the rest of my life knowing <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I'm simply just the messenger of news, you know. I guess, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Uh other than that, pretty fine. Great. Yeah, how are you, my dude? Well, it's the middle of the week when we are recording this, so I am yeah. tired in the most ways that one could be. I'm doing all right. Other than that, I did want to update on I think this will now be a a middle school update corner. <laughs> Beautiful. So I checked in with my student that was reading Twilight, and I did want to let you know that this student is now at the part where Edward followed Bella to Port Angeles. So I just wanted to give you an update to that. And also, I was informed by all of my middle schoolers today that Snapchat is not dead. So there oh, you go. Okay. All right. Um, they all know okay. that IG is better, but they all use it to text. So there. And I was supposed That's, to say it in that tone, so. Uh, yeah, no, I, the message has rung loud and clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, and also, somehow today we all started talking about the Pacer Test Vine, which will come up later in a question that we got, um, but it shook me to my core. So, because I, I found out today that they still do the Pacer Test, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I haven't <laughs> thought about that in years. <laughs> We have quite a few current events today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quite a few of them are actually sex-related. 
So, um, Welcome. get something to drink, because y'all might be thirsty. Get lubed up. Yep. Wear protection. Yep. Because um, we got be some safe. current events to talk about that involve the sex. Yeah. <laughs> the first one um, <laughs> is from a place called Grapevine. The Reykjavik Grapevine. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't stop saying it. I, could you, Cody, could you do me a favor, please? Uh-huh. Could you do me the honor of telling me what the title of this article is, please and thank you? I can't believe you're letting me say this, because you are so in love with this headline. I know, but... I would have assumed you would have just jumped at the chase to read it. I know, but I, I okay. want to give it to you. Wow, thank you. What a gift. The Reykjavik Grapevine has published this piece. Called War of the Nerds. Grab your flogger and latex, weirdos. <laughs> God, it's just so. <laughs> it's just. Uh, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. It's just. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you to Hannah Jane Cohen for writing this. Yep. And for in the first sentence of this piece using oft, like, wow, thank you. Ah. Uh, um, uh, a gift. And. Thank you for writing this story about the BDSM community and talking about the BDSM community specifically in Iceland, um, which is about what this is in. Because I didn't know about BDSM in other countries specifically, which is pretty dope. And so that's what this is about. It's talking about BDSM and the intersections of BDSM within the LGBTQ plus community um, within Iceland. And... I'm very interested in the fact that they had this article, especially because the title is just the coolest. Yeah. Um, So it's got some awesome photos in there, some fantastic sections. Specifically, my favorite part of this is the fact that it has an aftercare section. Thank you so much. And it's just, it's a good read. So check it out if you want. It's very good. Yeah. The other thing that I want to talk about, we might as well just do these sex ones right out of the way. Yeah, let's just fucking get into it. So yeah. the other one that is worth talking about is a Pulse piece that yeah. is titled 10 Kinky Sex Ideas that are super easy to try. Yeah. So this is a listicle. Shocker. And most of these, I think we have talked about to some degree before. But again, I think it's just worth bringing up that if you're interested in doing so, um, the reason why (laughs) this was brought up to our attention is the first one says to watch a kinky movie. Um, And (laughs) during this section, it says for the record, the experts also don't recommend Fifty Shades of Grey since not everyone in the kink community agrees with the way BDSM is portrayed in the film. It says, instead, queue up The Secretary on Netflix. So I haven't watched The Secretary. Neither have I. So I can't, I can't say anything yay or nay no. for this. I can't endorse this. Yes, but I can not endorse <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> yeah, that's for, for sure. For how it portrays yes. BDSM. So For sure. But I would, I would look into these and see if it's anything that you're interested in doing. And the, the people that are talked about in this article are experts in the field, which I am not. So uh-huh. give it a look-see. See if it's something you're interested in. Look at that. Do what? you... Here's a question. Yes. Do you have an ad on this particular website? Do I have an ad on this particular website? I have quite... Like, is there, like, before the list actually starts? Do you have, like, a big old sponsored message or like ad or something i don't will you explain to me what yours is um mine is for a switchblade (laughs) thank you for that and it happens twice in this article like two times i'm scrolling it's just like hey you want a knife and i'm like i mean i guess yeah oh sure (laughs) you got me but (laughs) so much yeah oh my goodness yeah, I don't have that, but that is because I often use, often a lot of the websites that we go to have the most amount of ads, and I personally find That's it true. very distracting, so when I'm looking at these, oftentimes I use ad blockers, just wow. because it's very distracting for me to 
differentiate between what is real and what is not real. Um, <laughs> what is real? <laughs> so that is my personal take on that. We have some character topics that we would like to get to. The, yeah, yeah. Could you talk to me about this insider piece? <laughs> I, I suppose I can. Okay. Um, it is a listicle from Insider. Yes. Of 15 of the most unlikable movie characters of all time. Okay. And we got some hits. We do have some hits. <laughs> <laughs> we got the bitchy mom from Parent Trap. Great. And that is that is the one and only Meredith Blake, which Meredith Blake. most of our friends who also listen to Coffee with Rachel may have heard that our premium bin show, Rachel, is planning yeah. to dress up as <laughs> Meredith Blake. For Halloween. And this is my official time to say that if she does not at least take a photo where she is stranded on a mattress in a body of water, she's not doing this costume right. <laughs> yeah, if she does not get her ass onto the puge, she's fake. It's not real. Yeah, it's over. Rachel Whitehurst is canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What if I just make that the title and she's just like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, like our truth because that's what they did there for their episode was like our truth. Um, we just make ours right. like Rachel Whitehurst is canceled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just start fake beef with our fucking friends. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh my god, that would be fucking hilarious. Um, oh my god. So some other notable ones here. The reason why this got onto our fucking desk. Um, can you imagine if we just had like a fucking journalism news desk? Like, <laughs> yeah. So someone had the fucking audacity to put Bella Swan on here. Who do I have to, you know, I'm rolling up my goddamn sleeves right now. <laughs> imagine me like Henry Cavill like I'm a fucking from the Mission Impossible right now I'm like punching yeah. things and my mustache is yeah, growing yeah your arms are now guns <laughs> yeah <laughs> like let me at him please <sighs> it's so it's like that the photo caption is she caused a lot of trouble but not a lot of good <laughs> The disrespect, I'm telling you. It's like, bitch, her whole life was just trying to avoid conflict at any <laughs> at any cost, and she just kept getting herself wrapped into it. There have been so many tweets that have been sent to us as of late of people being like, Bella just wanted to get dick and to like, live forever. Listen, That's all she yeah. wanted. That's all she asked for. She didn't want any of this fucking, like fighting shit she wanted this like vampire hierarchy shit no she just wanted to get that dick okay all the other people all right <laughs> on this list are asshole white men and you yeah. want to put this amazing beautiful horny woman on this list because she wanted dick why why yeah why why why? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, other notable ones that I think are worth talking about. Um, I went on a very long rant about Jar Jar Binks before Cody and I started recording. <laughs> so I'm not going to rehash it here, but just know that Jar Jar Binks is on here. The other one that I wanted to touch on. Fucking Cal from Titanic. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> The crush I had on Cal from Titanic. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so my whole life, because I watched Titanic, like, almost every weekend as a kid at my grandma's house. And my whole life was like, all right, who do I have the biggest crush on? Is it Rose? Is it Jack? Is it Cal? Uh -huh. I can't sure. tell. Is it all of them? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. Where am I? <laughs> Because they're all just so cute. And it was it was the hardest problem for me to figure out as a kid. You can't just put that star set of cast in there and expect people to be like, uh, yeah, I have one fave. So, anyways, Billy Zane is great, but Cal is an asshole. <laughs> but that's yeah. a story for another day. We have a screen rant corner. We're back, baby. We are back. And they are doing the Lord's work as usual. This is a listicle written by someone named Britt. So thank you um, from Screen Rant. Britt. Bringing us the good work. Um, this is 20 things wrong with Twilight we all choose to ignore. Yikes, McGikes. 
Um, so there are a lot of great things here. And by great, I mean the... Yeah. Are there any immediately from this list that are things that you want to discuss right off the bat? I don't think any of these are things that we have chosen to ignore. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I feel like we've talked about every single one of these at length Mm -hmm. in terms of our discourse. I feel like we have Um, an episode about each one of these. Right. Like, you can go back to the catalog. We've talked about something. I feel like the first season of our show is only about number six, which is Charlie is constantly pushed to the side. Yeah. Yes. If you only want to talk about how much we adore Charlie Swan and that he is the pride and joy of our lives, check out season one. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 Or, I mean, we don't get into too much about number two, about Bella and Edward's age difference, but we get into it quite a bit. Yeah. So I think all of these, we could you can touch into a very specific point of our, of our show for this. And so I think that they're not necessarily nuanced ones or things we haven't quite heard of before. Sure. But yeah. they are always important to bring up and remember. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. We're always looking for the new things. We're always looking for new content. Boom, boom. And for our last thing, um, our Pats is recently in the news for talking about being ready to come back to the Twilight Saga. Cody, would you mind talking about that? Yeah, this fucking article shook all of Twitter. It did. <laughs> like, like, I felt it. I was, like, signed into the account, but I wasn't, like, on it. But I could still feel, like, the vibrations mm-hmm. from My phone was like, you need to switch. And I was like, okay. And just, like, hundreds and hundreds of people screaming about this fucking piece. Yes. Because, like, I don't know, Robert Pattinson has been, like, I mean, I feel like him and, and Case 2 have been very, like, apprehensive about the series and have, like, voiced their, you know, opinions about that and how they aren't really proud that that's part of their legacy or whatever. So just thinking about, like, coming back or, like, having any sort of, like, reunion or whatever, or, like, series, whatever, seem very out of the picture, right? Agreed. And so this... I could have bet... I would have put money down that he would have never said anything like this, joking or otherwise. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. And the fact... The fact in... The the whole quote that this is surrounded is so perfect. It's very good. He says, the amount of time I've spent moisturizing, I'm ready to play 17 at a moment's notice. So this man is a skincare king. What I would give. He's treating his body right. He's treating his face right. He's getting all that. I want, drop that skincare routine. I need it I so stand. bad. <laughs> I need it. I need it. I I'm like, <sighs> wow. And what a way to just drop that information. It's like, while I'm moisturizing, I think like, oh my god, I could like... The Edward Cullen again. Yeah, because now all I can think about is he looks at himself in the mirror and does the, like, snarl. Yeah. He does the, like, a little... <laughs> like, please. I... What I would give for just a, like, 10-second, really poor quality video that he just has his publicist leak onto Twitter of his skincare routine. Yeah. All I need. All I need. I just want to know. Because... There is there's just as much of a chance that he uses real expensive products as he does mm-hmm. drugstore as shit products. Oh, absolutely. And I need to know. Yeah. Please Ugh. confirm. Please confirm. So, yes, I need to know. I would love it really bad. So, thank you so much, Arpats. Give it to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. So, we have a very important question this week. Yeah. The question being, what Vine best describes the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise so far? And Mm -hmm. which ones best represent each character? This is a very good question. This is a very good question. I agree. Ugh. So, like, mm, here's what I'm thinking. Yep, lay it on. The one that I'm thinking for... (laughs) <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Here's the one oh, that I'm no. thinking oh, no. for the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise so far. The okay. one of the Lana Del Rey song of the uh-huh. chicken in the red dress. Uh-huh. 
where she's like, I got my red dress on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I think that's the inner goddess slash slash Anna. Oh fuck. Okay. I think that fine. Would be that one. Fine. What's coming to mind for the franchise, which I'm not very confident in, but I do think <gasps> it's funny. Okay. No go. Is the bumper one that's like, is there anything better than pussy? Yes, a really good pussy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because that's, I guess that's more me projecting of my feelings, because I'm like, I don't want to read this, so I'd rather do literally anything else. Yes. I love that, mm-hmm. too. Yes. Okay. Yes, I agree. <laughs> the only other one I was thinking of, because I don't know how to properly explain this one, uh-huh. sure. but it's the one where all of a sudden everything is like fine in the video but then all of a sudden it's like the two people in spider-man suits where they're slapping each other's asses <laughs> yeah that's pretty good too yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no i like yours better um because it's definitely it's definitely bo burnham that's this yeah. fine um okay yeah. so each person anna's is anna's definitely the, the yeah. check-in <laughs> <laughs> that's her being like i look very good tonight <laughs> I got my red dress on. <laughs> Just strolling around, not knowing how to be sexy. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, God. Is there, like, a business vine? I don't, I don't know. There is. There's that one where it's the boy who is like, I'm an adult. Everything is fine. I Everything is all good. And then he, like, drops his lays. Do you remember that one? He's like, yeah. he's like, I'm an adult. Nothing is a big deal. Until you, like, drop your chips on the floor. And you don't cry about it. <laughs> that might be Christian. That's what I'm saying. That's like... Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's pretty good. And then Kat, Kate's is, actually, Megan, you, I can't say, <laughs> <laughs> I have hemorrhoids. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I can't sit anywhere. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Actually, Christians might also be, thanks for checking in, I'm still a piece of garbage. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But. That's like his voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Taylor's might be the pacer test one. Oh, yeah. Just because he's like, serious business. Yeah, sure, serious. <laughs> I, are there, any, are there literally any other characters in this? <laughs> Not really. Okay. Not, yeah, no. What is the what is one for the playroom though? Really quick. Oh fuck. Uh oh. It. Mm, <laughs> I don't think that's. I'm trying to think of anything relevant. The only listen. The thing that popped into my mind, which again I'm not confident in, but I do think is a fun joke. I have <laughs> one. So yeah, go. Yeah, this is just the bit one. The one where with the rubber chicken, <gasps> and then he puts his hand down, and then they're all just screaming <laughs> bloody murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> mine was a similar idea, but a different tone. Sure. Uh, mine was Miss Keisha. <laughs> Miss Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> she died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> um, either one. Either the one... Both of the Miss Keisha ones, the one where she's yeah. slamming down. The whole Miss Keisha filmography. Yeah. The one where she's slamming down on it, on that doll. And then also the one where she's like, Miss Keisha, she dead. Both of those. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, That's such nuanced. Like, this is so fucking ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Um, but thank you for that question. That's very good. Please, if you have suggestions for what they should be, let us know. I'm always down. Fine humor is my favorite humor, so it's very good. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about chapters 9 and 10. Okay. <laughs> Previously on Into the Twilight, 
We left. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, we left off at the end of chapter eight, where it was the pseudo "I love you" conversation, right. AKA. Um, <laughs> Anna looked at Christian was like, you love me. And he said, yes. <laughs> he was like, sure. <laughs> he said, not no. <laughs> and she <laughs> lost He it. said, sorry, can you speak up? <laughs> yeah. What was that? <laughs> and she was like, he said, yes. She like <laughs> screamed out the window. <laughs> yeah. And so that's where we've left off here. Yeah. So she's freaking losing it. She is definitely freaking losing it. <laughs> so here's the problem we've got a lot of emotional labor that's happening at the beginning of this chapter hey she is like crying right now she's considering this the best moment of her life and yeah. she even says at the beginning of this in this moment i know my heart is big enough for both of us i hope it's big enough for both of us and it's like mm-hmm. anna what he didn't say he I mean, he didn't really say he loves you. Yeah. He was just like, what? <laughs> like, he was like on his phone. Play- I mean, this was like, what, 2014? So he's playing, yeah. what What game was he playing on his phone? Was he playing? Oh, 2014. Doesn't he have a Blackberry, though? I, I have no frame of reference. Yeah, I don't know. Was he playing Farmville? Could you play Farmville on your Blackberry? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Farmville? <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> was he playing? I feel like Chris. No, he heard it. What the fuck was it called? Snappy Frog. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind. I need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was it called? Am I having a stroke? What was it called? Angry Birds or Flappy Bird? (laughs) Um, There are two of which... (laughs) I was thinking of Angry Birds, Snappy Birds. That was close. Snappy Birds is Angry Birds in a jazz club. (laughs) Like those, like, moody beatniks, like, poetry. (laughs) Jazz square birds. Yeah. Oh, my Christ. You know, the Christian's, like, response was... So, it's like when someone, like calls your name or whatever and you're just like yeah <laughs> that's that and she was like yes he loves me and he was like what <laughs> oh my god sorry what <laughs> yeah it was the equivalent of like when your mom says your name and like they're trying to call you from a, like around the house and then your mom yeah. like she says your name once and you're like yeah and then <laughs> you, you like say your mom's name and she never says anything back and so you start <laughs> never. like <laughs> your mom disappears into the ether and so <laughs> you just <laughs> you start like yelling for your mom and her like response finally after like 20 minutes and then that was that was Christian's response yeah but Anna took it as like a declaration of love Oh yep. my god. Okay, so he was playing Snappy Birds in Farmville. <laughs> yeah. Angry Birds, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. He was playing something on his phone. Sure. Anna gets very horny by this declaration of love and is like, let's do it. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> but they're. I think I'm ready to make love. I'm ready to have the sex, I think. I think I'm ready. Um, okay. They're in the bathroom, from what I remember. Yeah. And. So, they do this very interesting situation that becomes very not-so-subtly religious, where Christian, like, wraps this towel over Anna's head and, like, Mm -hmm. over her hair, essentially. And then he, I think, also has a towel wrapped around his body, and they're, like, touching each other, and she says, like... Some towels. Yeah, it's... (laughs) It's, like, a weird, like... There's a lot happening in this moment, um, where she describes it, she's like, we look almost biblical, as this is, like, Old Testament Baroque painting, and I'm like, E.L. James, what are you... (laughs) What is your kink that's getting into this space? <laughs> Why are you now putting this in here? It was it was very sudden, very strong tonal shift that happened. So anyways, all of a sudden they they do have the sex. 
And she's like, weird. You were, like, gentle. And he's like, mm, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't know. That can happen sometimes. They start talking about, like, robbing each other of virtue. There's a lot of language Ugh. that's happening here that's super gross. Ugh. There's something really weird that Anna does. She does not understand Christian's trauma at all. And so no. she just starts asking him questions about it at all times. Yeah. And it's, it is not appropriate by any no. sense of the word. And so she'll just... Read the fucking room, Anna. Y- fucking god damn it. She'll just say like, oh yeah, we were cuddled up in each other's arms in post-coital bliss. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to ask about your biological father that you've okay. never mentioned. <clears throat> And Anna, come on. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, Anna, you know that Christian doesn't like to be touched because of his scars. You know that he has mentioned before that he doesn't like to talk about his past. In what context do you think that this would be appropriate to bring up? How have you not figured out that if he wanted to talk come about on. this, he would do it? Uh, and, like, I understand, like, she's coming from good intentions, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, she just has no bearing of like what is appropriate and what are the like the boundaries like especially when she's like rubbing him with a towel or whatever she's like oh well maybe this is how i can i can like make him like touch himself with my hands so it's like we're connecting or whatever and i'm like this isn't really something you can compromise on you know what i mean like this is something that he still has a lot of baggage about right still dealing with it and this is still very new to him so like Let's just, like, dial it back a little bit. Yeah, let's just yeah. have him figure out when this works for him. Yeah. You know. Now, he does start talking and answering some of her questions, but it's it's very clear with how E.L. James writes this that he's not comfortable. No. <laughs> we can tell that it's clear that E.L. James is British because, again, it's the whole, like, phoning it into the authorities. It's like, E.L. James, stop. Yeah. <laughs> like. Where are these people from? Honestly, I feel I like what what are her editors doing? Are they also British or are they just bad at their jobs? <laughs> I mean both, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the part where I don't like to make apologies for either of these characters. Because no. both of them are fucked up in a lot of different ways. But there's a part of this scene H- how many different ways? How many different ways? About fifty. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. <laughs> um <laughs> But there's a part of the scene where Christian is talking about his past, and he's yes. he has to apologize. He's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. And this is a part where, and I can't believe this, and I'm going to say this, but I felt like Christian didn't need to apologize. Yeah. Because- The one moment. The one time that I felt like Christian apologized and he didn't need to. Because yeah. this is something that he did not ask to talk about, mm-hmm. and Anna asked- and he is yeah. divulging to where he feels comfortable. Yeah. So that was a part where I was like, I mean, thank you, Christian, for saying, like, this is where I'm talking to where I feel comfortable. Thank you for acknowledging that this may be something that is sensitive to Anna. But, like, sure. he didn't need to apologize for this. Anyways, they get dressed and stuff. One of the things, when he's getting dressed for, what like, what they're going to do for today, it's mentioned that he puts this, like, cream sweater, and he, like, drapes it over his shoulders. Like, he's a fucking Ken doll. And I was like, okay, Christian, you're so posh. You're so rich. Like, we get it. Are you going to, like, get an ascot, too, and, like, tie your <laughs> sweater over your shoulders? Like, shut up. You're so annoying. So they plan on doing... This, like, he has this, like, glorious day planned for them, apparently. But before they can do that, they have, like, 15 stops or something that they have to do. Because they go and get Anna a new car? Question mark? What? Why? What? For no apparent reason. What are we doing? Are we out of plot points? Are we out of just things to do? Apparently. How many times do we have to talk about cars in this fucking trilogy? I'm over it. Yeah, I mean, mood. So we found out when we were talking. Let's go to the fucking auto zone. Like, what? Why? What? <laughs> yeah, let's go get. No, her, let's go get Christian's oil changed. Like, let's. Like, <laughs> like, like what are we doing? Let's go fucking there's, a Les Schwab. Like, like, what? There's so many, mo- so much more of this. I don't understand. Yeah. Are we phoning it in this early? Like, come on. Yeah, apparently, from what we found out last week, 
her tires were slashed and she got mm. paint on her car. So apparently the only way to a solve that problem is to get a new car. <laughs> Yeah. That's how we solve problems as adult people. That's, yeah. Right. Yes. There is, like, literally 15,000 pages of her getting a new car where Christian is like, business, business, <laughs> car, car. And mm-hmm. car man. What color do you want? Mm-hmm. Car man is like, yes, car, car. And <laughs> Anna's looking at these two like, so are y'all going to pull your dicks out? And like, what's <laughs> are you going to kiss? Like, what's happening? Yeah. Then... Before this huge thing that they're about to do, this huge event that she still has no idea what they're going to do, they go down to this marina and they have lunch where they apparently get thick chowder and beer. Thick. Very thick chowder. Thick. Thick. Yeah. It is, it is a sludge. It is. It's, it's just gruel chowder. It is just clams. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is clams tucked in flour. And it is it is not yeah. actually any sort of liquid. And they seem to have a good time. Christian apparently is, like, beaming this whole time. Because during this convert, or during this lunch, rather, he just talks at her about his job and all of his passions. Uh-huh. And that's it. Apparently, he asks her questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we don't find out any actual information about her. Uh there's really no confirmation of those questions being asked. Yeah. We just find out more information about him and his company. It's like so much exposition without giving us anything. Yep. It's like, wow, we had a great conversation. Not that I'm going to tell you what we talked about, but I did find out that we do have a lot in common. So fucking don't even worry about it, guys. We are like, we're chill. We we have interests that are shared we between us. We are totally soulmates. What are we oh soulmates about? I have no idea. Who can say? I remember the little prince reference. That's all I can pull yep. up. That's. But then the rest of this chapter is just boat time. The open sea. They are. Buckle up, everyone. Take your Dramamine. We are going <laughs> on the water. Yeah. So Christian, of course, has a boat. He has a big boat. Yeah. He has a big boat that has a big boat sailman on it, too. Yeah. That is, the boatman is named Mac. Because of course he is. <laughs> and that's how the rest of this chapter is spent. They go sailing on the Puge, mm-hmm. and Anna loves it. Christian loves Everyone it. Everyone gets really horny <laughs> about the sea. Yep. It's very good. They... They go inside the boat. They see that there's a bed. Christian wants to fuck on the bed because he's Christian. They have a little riff where he's like, oh, yeah, I'm your pervert. And that's gross because they're the worst. (sighs) Yep. While they're on the open sea, Anna suddenly remembers that she has a friend and <laughs> yeah, she's like, "Wow!" It's like, "Hey, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> what's my girl up to?" Yeah, she's like, "Man, I really miss Kate. I wonder where she's I've been, been seeing her in a year, <laughs> <laughs> a calendar year. She's been in Barbados. I've just been on the sea for it seems like forever." Yeah, they. Yeah, is she dead? Like, I don't. <laughs> I legitimately <laughs> have no idea. <laughs> it's been, we are legitimately ha- more than halfway through this series, <laughs> and Kate is gone, girl. <laughs> How She's been gone, girl, too. What happened? This series is supposed to be happening in, like, what, two weeks? A month? Uh-huh. How long has yeah. she been in Barbados? <laughs> <laughs> is she okay? Like, I thought at this point she would be back and have started a job, but who the fuck knows? Because I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so they're out on the open water. During this time, Anna's having a great time. Her subconscious is not. Her subconscious nope. is like, you're really lucky, but Christian doesn't want you. And you're going to have to yeah. work through this. And so she's just having a, a really interesting time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yikes, the yikes. It's like, hey, just want to peep in real quick. Uh, I noticed you're having a really great time right now. Can I just remind you that 
none of this is real and this all of this is a fabrication and he'll never love you <laughs> and then she leaves yeah. and she's like oh cool um spiral yeah. let's spiral so now anna is just disassociating on the open sea so also wow hold on can we just like think about the physics of like fucking on a boat real quick please i hate it okay <laughs> like, like i hate that concept I feel like I would I would throw up. Like I feel like I would get really sick. Yeah, yeah, that sounds awful. I'm not. A, that doesn't sound like a good time. Agreed. And yeah, I mean, hard pass. Yeah, I mean that was like a a common theme in Mamma Mia too. And <laughs> yeah. everyone's fucking on boats. Yeah. What's the deal? Talented Mr. Ripley. That whole ass movie is people fucking on boats. <laughs> I just I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. So anyways, and that's what they do. Just a horny little boat boy, you know what I mean? All right. This podcast is what? done. <laughs> what? What? Is, what does the salty air do to people is what I got to ask. <laughs> okay. Yeah, true. Is it, does it, does that texturized hair, is that what it does to people, you know? Yeah. It's a little, se- it's like a fun, sexy, like, appearance change. You're like, oh, that's fun. That's new and different. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, they, they fuck on this boat. Is what I gotta say. Yeah. Um, yeah. They do the damn they thing. They do the damn thing. Because, and one of the things that's important about this is even though she's disassociating. Yeah. She, they do this little, like, strip tease to each other. And it's important oh. to mention that Anna says that she doesn't feel cheap anymore. She's kind of feeling, hey. she's kind of feeling good. She's kind of feeling into yeah. it. Yeah. She feels sexy. Yeah. She feels <clears throat> desired. She kind of likes it on this boat. Uh, listen. Everyone's got their thing, and that's fine. I can't relate. I just think logistically, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I will vom. That's, yeah, I, sorry. It's a hard pass for me. Yeah. If it works for Chase her. Your bliss. Yeah. Um, then that's great. And that's where this yeah. chapter ends, is they, they're doing it on the open sea. Yep. So chapter 10 starts. Um, uh, it, I should mention that Mac was off the boat when this happened. They were on an island. So Mac uh-huh. wasn't just like, hey, do you guys need like snacks <laughs> or anything? Um, do you want to have a... D- Let me know. Yeah. <laughs> he Let wasn't being like the cool mom. Because <clears throat> Christian would have like snapped his neck. He would have literally <laughs> yeah. killed him. Would have committed murder for good boat sex. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> so anyways, they do leave eventually. And on the way back, Anna's losing her mind she's like so does he love me does he love me not she's just like throwing things in the water (laughs) like um (laughs) she's just like love me love me not love me love me not and eventually like max like hey um we need those so can you stop guessing and like can you just stop throwing things in the water (laughs) just like think instead so there's like a peep there's a ton of people that like cheer and clap when they get back into uh, the city, which like no, that's not that's not a thing. They arrive back at the hotel. We find out first of all, this is the most shocking thing about both these chapters. Taylor, Taylor, hi, Taylor, yeah, hi, hi. <laughs> the Taylor. Taylor's not his first name. Yeah, his his mm. real name is Jason. How does that how does that happen? So. Christian's just been calling Taylor by his last name, which is Taylor, when his real name is Jason this whole time. So, like, all right, I get it. This person, Taylor, he works for you and lives in your place. So you just call him by his last name. But, like, he lives in your house and he's, like, your only friend, Christian. Just call him by his first name. I'm still going to call him Taylor. Yeah, that's his God-given name. (laughs) Exactly. The the rest of the chapter goes in and is like Anna just goes in on Christian is like do you have any friends Christian? <laughs> <laughs> what we've been saying exactly we were just uh, two chapters too early and he's like no I don't have any friends that's just you know I don't really do friends <laughs> yeah I'm kind of like over friends you know exactly I, mean? I got like my like associate my colleagues you know and. Anna just looks at him and is like, no, but for real, though, like, who do you talk to? <laughs> yeah, like, what, are you good? <laughs> yeah. They do end up going to dinner, and they have a a talk about 
everything that Anna's been nervous about. About like, hey, so I've been feeling really anxious about this weekend and I really liked it, but I'm just worried that this isn't enough for you. And I feel like this is a good step yeah. for Anna. Instead of just bottling this up, she communicates, sure. reads. Hey, Look at what that. do you know? <laughs> Communicating. Oh, wow. What? So I think it's it's communication for them, right? So it's not ideal. But I do think it's a, it's a step in a direction for them. <laughs> yeah. Which is, hey, we are addressing what we both need. Let's try to find a an effective, equitable compromise for both of us. I I don't know that it, it's the an ideal example of sure. communication, but it's something. Hey. So yeah. I I can't give too much shit for it. They reference his therapist and the whole like walk before you can run, which I mean fair, you know, like try to get through something mm-hmm. there. And, you know, they're talking about what they need to go for there. Um, one of the things that I did want to mention with you about is when they get back to the the apartment, like the townhouse or whatever, they talk about, they meet Taylor and they're like, hey, so thanks so much for all that you did. And Anna's like, yeah, so when we were at the hotel, we had to be Mr. and Mrs. Taylor. That's so wild, right? And Aww. she's joking with Taylor. But here's the thing. Christian immediately sees this as she's not just bantering with Taylor. He sees this as she is flirting with his staff. And he flips a switch, like, within milliseconds. So he's like, I'll be with you super shortly, Taylor. I just want to have a word with Miss Steele. And he, like, takes her to the side and closes the door and is like, don't flirt with my staff, Anna. Don't be friendly with my staff. Don't flirt with them. I don't like it. Yeah. And it, everything that they had just done was immediately (laughs) gone out the window. Like, so quickly (laughs) reverse. Like, flip it back and reverse it. It's all gone. Yeah. Yeah. Because here she was, and I, to me, it felt like, She's making an attempt to get to know the people in his life. And, like, this is her way of trying to be jovial and friendly. And he takes it as, like, an open, uh, like, offense to the, to him. And so, again, like, this is, a, this is a social boundary that's been crossed. Like, this is a miscommunication between the two of them. But, again, like, this is a very possessive thing for him to do that's not acceptable. Is no good. No, 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 no. <sighs> she goes upstairs to, like, find all of her stuff. And she's like, what the fuck? Like, my iPad's gone. My Mac is gone. Um, all of the stuff. And so she goes downstairs to Christian's room and is like, uh. Like, is Layla back in the house? Like, do I need to be on edge? All the stuff. And then she finds yeah. all of her clothes in Christian's room. And all of her electronics in Christian's room. And he's there, too. And all of a sudden, like, completely deadpan, he's like, oh, they managed the move. And she's like, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) Like, there's so much happening here. And we find out all of a sudden here, there's two pieces of information happening. He is spouting that, like, Layla is, she's been evading all these pieces of attempts to get help and all these things. And then he's also saying, like, is it okay if you share like his room he wants to make sure that she is safe all this stuff yeah which from what we know about christian he doesn't share rooms you know like his space is his space Mm -hmm. and stuff too and from what she's been freaking out about the like i love you thing we know that she'll probably take that as more of a big deal so like there's a lot of different motions happening right now against anna and then he drops the biggest bombshell they're talking about because this has all been happening in, like, one weekend. Like, the party and then the sailing and stuff. So, tomorrow was she goes back to work. And so, she's like, all right, cool. Well, I need to get all my work stuff together. And he's like, what are you, what are you talking about? What do you mean? And he's like, I don't want you to go to work. So, now they have a conflict on the hand. Yep. Because he owns her job. Uh-huh. But she's a human being <laughs> that can't just yeah. sit around... Well, he does his job because he yeah. thinks that she's helpless. 
No. And and she's just like, I I need to like I need to go to work. Like I need to go to my job. And he's like, No, you don't. You don't have to go to your job. And she's like, I I get what you're saying, but I need and want to go to my job because I still wanna have a life yep. outside of you, which you're making very difficult because you own my job. Yes. And the only way that he will let this happen is if if she takes a like a security personnel with her. Which <sighs> how do you have any sense of normalcy if there is someone there just like watching you with the expectation that they're gonna report everything back to Christian? You don't. Like that's not that's not how that happens. She finally relents and she'll take Sawyer with her so long as she can leave and go to work. <sighs> so fucking it's awful. It's the worst. They finally and the assumption is that they've been together for over a month now. He finally gives her a tour of the apartment. Like all the rooms and stuff. He shows her like Taylor and Mrs. Jones, like all of their place. And then they finally make this like joke about where he keeps his Xbox. It's weird, <laughs> weird little piece of humor after all of this like gross little bit that you've done. We also find out this weird thing about, like, he apparently doesn't have a middle name. It's like, okay. You know, it, chill. It's a good it's a, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, but it's, like, still weird. No. Um, and then the end of this chapter is very, it's filled with a lot of sexual tension. With the two of them playing billiards. Which, again, who says billiards? Yeah. Fucking Leave on. it alone. I, I have... Am- I'm dreading watching this movie, but I'm very excited to see this in the movie. Okay, why is that? <laughs> I want, just because I, listen, I love a good pool scene. You know what I mean? I, okay. And I, they were having, they looked like they were having they fun. They did. You know what I mean? And also, but also like two seconds ago, Anna was stressed about going to work. And then they're like, well, let's play a whole game of pool first. <laughs> it's like, ma'am, I guess while I'm here. Yep. Yeah. The offer is there. <laughs> yeah, it felt like they were definitely getting out all their sexual tension into this billiard Yeah, it scene. was fun. They were, like, talking about each other's butts, and, like, they were both, like, gazing at each other, which was fun. Like, they were both seeing each other's, like, sexual objects instead of just, like, putting all that weight on mm-hmm. Anna. You know what I mean? Like, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. And it was, fun. It, was. it was. It was a very... And it's competitive, and they can get, like, you know... It's fun. It was a much needed relief for the two of them, I think, because um, it it yeah. definitely felt even between the two of them, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's where the chapter ends. Is they're they're having a lot of sexual tension. They're playing pool, which was very good. Having a good they're time. Having a good time, which they're cracking up in a cold one. Well, yeah, with the boys, them being the boys, which is yeah. nice. It was a much needed relief. Which I appreciate. Yeah. So yeah, so next week will be chapters 11 and 12, which I'm looking forward to. And hopefully the the light edge of this will continue. I doubt it, but I can one can hope, you know? Yeah. Before we get to our fantastic fa- fan fiction for this week, I want to shout out our patrons. This week, I want to thank our fantastic patrons. Um, first of all, being Shannon Clearwater, and we're gonna do them as that from the Insider article of the fifteen of the most unlikable movie characters of all time. Even though these are some yeah. of our most likable people of all time. Yeah. So, Shannon, I will have you be. I mean, I think you're gonna have to be Prince Hans from Frozen. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry about, about it. it. I mean, Sorry about it. he did have some A plus style, though. You know what I mean? Some yeah. very crisp cuts. What more could you ask for? I don't. I mean, there's nothing else to ask for. That's it. That's yep. It. Shout out to Katie Weber, who is gonna be Jerry Maguire. Oh, because he's the one face I see every time I'm at a thrift store. Because he's on every single VHS that is in that That's true. <laughs> store. At any given time. All right. And I'm going to give the biggest shout out to Simon Steele. And this might be controversial, but I'm going to give Simon the most iconic one from this list. And that is the one, the only, Miss Trunchbull. 
Okay. From yep, Matilda. Good. Great. Yeah. yeah because yeah, 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 yeah. Matilda is the most iconic of films. I yeah. will never be able to forget it. And I stay. I, I do. I do. I stand. Um, <laughs> I'll say it. I stay. <laughs> and I, she truly is an unlikable movie character. But Simon, I will say, you're not unlikable. No. So thank you so much. Thank you. So I chose this week's fan fiction. I, uh-huh. I worked on hard knee and hard hand. There was a lot of elbow grease to be had. Sure. And I found this one. Y'all made me do my own work, which I appreciate. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one was created by the fanfiction author, Fifty Shades of Grey Twihard. Okay. And <laughs> I found it under the category, obviously, Fifty Shades Trilogy. But the title is, Where Has Writer Gone? Where has writer gone? And the okay. the description of this fan fiction is, please help. <laughs> and it was published on July 15th of this year. Okay. All right. So enjoy. This is a this is a one shot, I will say. And remember, it was published under the Fifty Shades trilogy category. Okay. Okay. Does anyone know when the writer inks ink will bother updating her stories? It really pisses me off when I get involved in good stories and then the writer doesn't even care enough to keep them going. I want to know how piece by piece ends up, but I don't think I should have to wait 10 years to find out. I've given my time to reading it and the least a writer can do is honor their commitment. It's annoying when they don't. Any help would be appreciated. Thanks. And scene. <laughs> That's, that's it, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is just like a reminder to the people that are listening. This is what happens when you don't give us fan fictions. <laughs> <laughs> Allie goes rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Allie gets a little tired. <laughs> I'm just. And brings us this. <laughs> she brings us this. <laughs> I'm just very. I'm very confused, and I'm also very intrigued by what led this person to post this <laughs> as a individual fan fiction <laughs> instead of a comment somewhere. But you know what? This isn't a time for comments, you know? Just, I, where has writer gone, you know? I asked myself that a lot. fan fictions. <laughs> please send us fan fictions. Because we all suffer when we, don't, when we don't get any. Where has writer gone? We're all hurting. <laughs> <laughs> As we say in Seattle. Get bit. Where has Ryder gone? <laughs> Get whipped. This is an Earbud Media production. You can find us on Twitter at Earbud Media and listen to the rest of our shows. You can find this show on Twitter at Into the Twilight, as well as Into the Twilight Show. You can send us an email at Into the Twilight Show at gmail.com. You can also become a sponsor of the show or buy some merch at Into the Twilight Our art is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at Your Ghost Toast 44 on Instagram, and our music is done by Eli Krauss. You can find at Eli Sour Krauss and KraussFilms.com. The intro and outro is by KB Smith. You can find it kb underscore underscore smith on twitter you can find ally on twitter at into wild places and you can find me at dyke discourse you've been listening to earbud media production earbud media audio for everyone